K-Max is wondering what happened with you at Glenn Black. Oh, Glenn back in the blaze. I thought you were going to work there. I, I didn't know about that. I don't know if that, that was a... It's a pretty big deal, Chrissy. How do you not know that? I'm sorry. I didn't know. Maybe you're not cut out for this. <laughs> Maybe. Like, you don't know the basics about your next guest? Um, I didn't know you were going to work for the Blaze. No. I was at CRTV. They merged with the Blaze. I was fired the next day. And Glenn Beck tried to keep me, but the owner... So that's the story I like. Like, uh, we merged with the Blaze... Glenn Beck couldn't handle it. He fired me, and I'm too hot for the mainstream. That's a that's the main version everyone got. Uh, Glenn probably could have fought more, but the truth of the matter is, here's what I think actually happened. So uh, I was getting bombarded by the swarm of bees that follow me, the Antifa bees, and they were attacking everyone I worked with, and showing them videos of me saying the N-word in a montage, among other things. Oh, I remember that. And I think a stupid bitch named Deneen Borelli, affirmative action hire, who is terrible at her job, and I think her husband writes, her white husband writes all her scripts. So she saw it and didn't have the fortitude or, or the intelligence, really, to call me and say, what's going on here? You say the N-word all the time? And if she had done that, I could explain the context. I'd never use that word like, get the return, just like, you know, most of Earth. Uh, but obviously a montage um, doesn't reflect that. So I think she threatened to sue CRTV. And uh, Casey Katz had PTSD from being sued by Mark Stein, where Mark Stein won a $10 million settlement and dragged everyone into court. That's a whole other funny story. So Mark Stein's a genius, right? And Casey Katz is, he made his money with student loans because you can't go wrong because the government guarantees them. So he became a billionaire, I believe, with student loans. <clears throat> he, he spies Mark Stein and says, dude, you're brilliant on Tucker. I want you to do a show. And Mark Stein says, okay, I want this, 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 and this. He negotiates a crazy deal. Casey has so much. I hope it is Casey Katz. I mean, it's not Carrie Katz. Casey Katz, CRTV, what's his name? So, Carrie Katz, sorry, Carrie Katz. So, Carrie has so much money, he goes, sky's the limit, whatever you want. So, Mark Stein then kind of goes nuts. And he says, all right, this is what I want. I want a piano bar, one giant set in New England where I am, where no one's in New England. How are you going to get guests? Oh, fly them out first class to see me. Okay. So he has a piano bar. He has an Ellen DeGeneres size set. And then he has like a stand-up comedy stage. So it's nicer than any club you've done stand-up in in your life. Like it's a stunning, it's better than Oprah's set. It's better than, it's three beautiful sets. All is one with these plexiglass stairs and go off into heaven. And then he proceeds to do like these, jazz songs and uh, invite his favorite characters from The Sopranos over to talk for like two hours about acting. And he makes these music videos. You gotta look up Mark Stein. I taught I saw a putty tat. I taught I saw a putty tat walking in on me. Oh, he does these brutal jazz songs about cats. It's almost like he has multiple personalities. Yeah. So there's the genius Mark Stein. His, he's one of my favorite writers. His books blow my mind. I don't even read his books when I'm tired because I'm going to miss too much. You need like a big breakfast, nothing to do that day. And then you can only read him for like an hour and a half. Cause it's, it's like uh, Mark Levin. It's just so fucking dense, such quality. So there's Is that, that you're Mark talking Stein. about. And then there's this fucking loser who loves his cat. What is going on? It gets worse. And this is every breath you take. Uh-huh. I thought I saw a pussy cat. Oh, God. Up on what? Me. Hmm. 
What? This is horrible. I thought I saw a pussy cat. I thought I saw a pussy cat. I thought I saw a pussy cat. I thought no, I saw a pussy good. cat. I thought I saw a Does pussy it get better? I thought I saw a me. Inclined to think that he would get Okay, now this doesn't get better. No, there's a giant pussy cat. And he's got that weird British accent where they say score. Arthur, I thought I saw a pussy. Oh, God. It's bad. It's real bad. So there's two Mark Steins, right? There's Mark Stein, the genius. We'll call him Mark Stein. And then there's Mark Stein, the retard. We'll call him Marky Stein. And Casey Katz spent tens of millions of dollars on Mark Stein, and Marky Stein showed up. Um, where did he go to school? Where did he get that accent? He's, he's Canadian originally, but I guess he grew up in British private schools. Anyway, um, so Casey Katz goes, I, I can't show this. This isn't, I thought you were going to be doing a news show. He just said garbage. So he goes, I'm going to have to fire you. This is crap. So then Mark sues him. This is a very long version of events. Um, and uh, so now he's petrified of being sued. So I believe, this is just my theory, but I believe Casey was petrified of Deneen suing him for her putting her near a racist or something. Uh, Deneen wasn't budging, so they fired me as a sacrifice to the racism gods. And then, of course, Deneen was fired a few months later for incompetence. And uh, that's what, and then the merging with Blaze, with Glenn Beck, that was all just a coincidence. That's not part of the story. So it's funny how the perception and the reality are always so distant in this day and age, especially when someone wants a fun soundbite. And the soundbite version was good for me, so I was like, whatever, fuck you. You got a PR nightmare to deal with, dumbasses.